We've all been told that to divide a fraction we need to multiply by its reciprocal. For example, if we were asked to work out, say, 2 thirds divided by 4 sevenths, the technique we're told as youngsters is to say, well, let's really make this 2 thirds times 7 fourths to get the answer 14 twelfths or 7 sixths. Um, fine, that's all good and dandy, but you must admit that this process is kind of mysterious. Why is this division, this obelisk here, that's the name of that symbol, suddenly changed to a multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction instead of the original fraction itself? So let's see if we can explore this question. Why is dividing by a fraction the same as multiplying by its reciprocal? Let's be very clear about it in the process. And in order to be very clear, we need to understand first and fully what is a fraction in the first place. So when I write something like six, whoops, excuse me, let's get the pen. When I write something like six tooths, six divided by two, it's really a division problem. I have, say, six pies to share amongst, say, two boys. That's clearly going to give me three pies per boy. So how do I check this? Three times two is indeed six. Or 20 pies shared amongst five boys really is going to be the fraction four, well, four once. Um, sharing one pie amongst two boys really is a meaningful answer. It's called half a pie, hence we call one tooth a half, and so on. So a fraction is really a division problem, nothing more than that. Uh, one of the beautiful things about fractions, which is also one of the most annoying things about them, is that their representation is not unique. For example, if I said three pies for four boys, well, I can actually get the same result if I double the number of pies and also double the number of boys. That doesn't change anything. There'll be six pies for eight boys. It's actually going to give the same amount of pie per boy as three pies, pies for four boys. Or if instead I tripled the number of pies and tripled the number of boys, nothing's going to change. It'll still be the same answer. Nine pies for 12 boys must be the same as the original three pies for four. Or if I multiply by 10 million and two, and another 10 million and two, it doesn't matter. So we have this key fraction rule I have a pies for b boys. If I multiply the number of pies up by some factor and multiply the number of boys up by the same factor, nothing changes. This is the key technique, key step that makes all the fractions work the way they do. In fact, to, you know, to explain this more fully, have a look at this fraction guide that's available at the website. Just, just download it. It's all there. All right, but to get to the reciprocal problem, let's look at some more complicated pie sharing problems. Suppose I asked us to share, excuse me, let's say two and a third pies amongst four and two fifth boys, to which you'd say, yick, go away, that's horrendous. But if I follow the key fraction rule, I can multiply the numerator and the denominator each by a common factor, and it won't change the problem. And in fact, if I choose nice factors, um, I can make the problem much nice, nicer and easier for myself. I choose to multiply the top by three and also the bottom by three. That has the beautiful advantage, two and one third times three. Well, two times three is six, plus one third times three is one, so the top line is actually seven. Bottom line is be four times three is 12, plus two fifths times three, ah, six fifths. That's still pretty nasty. But so far I have seven, 12, plus six fifths. I've made the top nice, the bottom is still a bit messy, but I can fix up the bottom by again, by choosing a clever, clever choice of factor for the top and the, for the numerator and the denominator. Let's multiply each by five this time. So seven divided by 12 plus six fifths is really the same as 35 divided by 12 times five is 60 plus six fifths times five is six, 66. So two and one third pies shared amongst four and two fifths of a boy is the same as sharing 35 pies amongst 66 boys. Beautiful, not too hard. Let's try another one. Suppose I wish to, say, share two and a half pies amongst three and a half boys. In fact, I've made this a very easy one. Clearly, there's a nice choice for what to multiply the top and bottom by. Let's multiply each by two. That's the same as sharing five boys, pies amongst seven boys. Not too bad. Uh, let's now do one that looks a little bit nasty. Let's have, say, two-thirds of a pie to be shared amongst four-sevenths of a boy. All right, we can do this. Uh, the top line's a fraction. Most people don't like fractions. Let's pretend I don't like fractions either. Let's get rid of the fraction. Can we multiply this by clever choice? Well, yes, let's choose three. And what I do to the top, I've got to keep it balanced by doing to the bottom. Scale both up by the same factor, so that doesn't change the problem. 
The top line now becomes 2 thirds times 3, that's 2. Bottom line now becomes, oh gosh, 12 sevenths. That bottom line's a bit of a mess. Is there a clever choice of fraction for the bottom, fact for the bottom line? Yes. Let's multiply this by 7 and this by 7, and we now have 14 twelfths. My goodness, that's the problem I just first started with. 2 thirds divided by 4 sevenths, there it is. We have 14 twelfths. Not a reciprocal in sight. Let's do this a little more abstractly, see what's going on. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Let's look at A pies for B boys divided by C by pies for D girls. That is, what's the fraction A beats divided by C deaths? Very strange. Well, is there a nice choice for top and bottom to multiply by a factor by? By a factor, sorry, my English is off there. Yes, let's multiply the top by B and let's multiply the bottom by B. While we're at it, we can be clever. Let's also multiply the bottom by D and therefore the top by D as well. That's not changed my fraction. What does the top become? Well, the top is AD and the bottom is C and the D's will cancel B. So there's a general formula for A beats divided by C deaths. Uh, but if I look at this, this really is my original fraction, A beats times D over C. That's the reciprocal. Like magic, it's just fallen into place. So to practice this idea, let me give you some little pieces of magic. And your challenge, your homework after watching this little video, is to see if you can explain why they're true. Let me give you a little example. If we did, say, 20 20 once divided by 4 sevenths, the answer shall be, okay, uh, 20 20 once times 7 fourths, which is 140 over, was that, 84? I'm sure there's a common factor of something around there. I can divide by 4. That gives me 35 and um, 20 once. All right, grand, I believe. Oh, that goes even further. Well, that's, that's 5, and this is 3. But here's something very curious. Sorry about that pause. Um, if I look at this, what's 20 divided by 4? And what's 21 divided by 7? Oh, my pen's not working. Hang on. I'm having troubles today. All right, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 21 divided by 7 is 3. <gasps> it's that. Here's my question. Is it true in general that A beats divided by C deaths is actually A divided by C over B divided by D? Did I just choose some numbers which by coincidence happen to work this way? Or is this true in general? Homework question number one. Here's homework question number two. Some teachers have kids perform division of fractions as follows. If they want to work out 20 20 once divided by 4 sevenths, they say put these fractions over a common denominator. All right, 20 once and sevenths. I guess I need to modify this, this latter guy. Also, I'll keep 20 once on the bottom, but instead of 4 sevenths, I'm now going to do uh, 12 20 once. Then they claim, ignore the bottom, the answer is going to be just the numerators divided by each other. Uh, dividing by 4, that gives me 5 thirds, which is the answer I had before. So here's my next question. Is A beats divided by C deaths really the answer of, well, I don't know how to write this in, in symbols, put this over a common denominator and then just divide the numerators? Very curious. Is that true in general or is that just a little artifice? Actually, I do explore. I do explore these issues and many other things in this guide. So feel free to have a look at the fraction guide. It's kind of fun. All right, thank you very much.